Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Anna Froelich. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching the show as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray and I help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny. I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Anna Frolik. We'll be sharing how the importance of trusting your own intuition, especially in connection with finding and living your purpose, as well as tips on how to deal with sensitivity in business work or your general environment to help you with your journey. Now, Anna is a spiritual guide and mentor for purpose-driven business owners. She helps light workers and conscious entrepreneurs awaken to their true calling, release deep-seated business fears and limiting beliefs that are holding them back, and create a freedom-based business that is both profitable and aligned with their soul essence, so they can leave their corporate prisons for good do their sacred work full time and live the life they know is truly possible for them. Anna's personal journey is fascinating and with testimonials like Anna's soul, wisdom, business knowledge and spiritual sensitivity shines forth in everything she does. And this is what makes her work so inspiring, powerful and life changing. She is someone you want to connect with. So without further ado, hello Anna and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? <laughs> Hi, Ray. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. And I'm doing great. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, then please hit the like love button and please say hello to let us know who is here. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates of all recordings. You can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Anna and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We will say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments once the show is finished, if we can't get to them whilst the show's going. So uh, we have, oh, let's see. We have, San is here. Hi, San. Thank you for tuning in. Um, so Anna, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then how you can help women with trusting their own intuition? All right, so that's a pretty long story, actually. It's definitely connected to my own journey as an entrepreneur and also really my spiritual awakening journey and my relationships and everything. Maybe I could just start by sharing how I got started in my business. That was back mm. in 2009. I had always known that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, that I wanted the freedom to live life on my own terms and, and just, you know, put my own creative ideas into action, be free to travel and not have a boss telling me what to do and things <laughs> like that. And so I'd really had that inspiration for a long time, but finally I decided to take that leap and I basically took what I knew from my corporate job, which was in advertising. I was a copywriter and content editor in the advertising industry. And I turned that into my own business. And that was really successful really quickly. And because I already had a network and my employer even became my first client. So the universe really helped with that. Yeah. And so it was a really great way to transition from working in a full-time corporate job to having my own business and, and being more free to live life on my own terms. <laughs> However, what happened after about a year was I, I really started to feel burnt out and I, I kind of hit a wall 
and I was feeling more and more resistance to moving forward on this journey. I was like, I just like I dreaded waking up in the mornings and I was dealing with a lot of anxiety and and I still wasn't really feeling free inside um, the way I had expected. So initially I thought that I just wanted more time freedom. So I started taking some steps in my existing business to create more passive income, but that still wasn't really it. But I was definitely heading in the right direction with that guidance that was coming through. So one day I had the idea to write an ebook and I had, um, I came across an ebook that just kind of, yeah, explained how to get started and so on. And then I did a brainstorming exercise. I was sitting outside on, on my balcony um, in Switzerland back then and brainstorming ideas in a very specific way. And then all of a sudden that idea came through, I'm going to do something in connection with angels. Um, that was something that I had always known was going to be part of my journey and had actually been for a long time, but I knew that it was going to be more of a career or that I was going to be a spiritual guide of some sorts at some point. And so that then unfolded really quickly. I started a blog about angels and then things just like took off, like my entire life changed. So I think that was the first part of this journey where I was really just really connected to my own intuition and just following my inner guidance and, and the joy that was guiding me in that direction. And, and things just unfolded very rapidly from there. And then there is a second part of the journey that I can either share now or a bit later. <laughs> um, so if, if you fit, if you think it fits in now, mm -hmm. then, then, then fit it in now or okay. if you think it'll fit in later fit it in later okay I'm just gonna try to make it a bit shorter but um basically there was another time in my business later on after I came back here to Canada um I went through a lot of trauma um yeah during a certain period of my journey it was more connected to my relationships and I uh, had some traumatic experiences and also just coming back here because I had lived here as a child and it was really traumatic for me to go back to Europe. And then when I came back in 2012, it was like everything just came to the surface. I had no roots. And so that was really traumatic. And I started really disconnecting from my from myself and from my own intuition and giving my power away to other people and um because initially i think i just didn't want to feel that pain anymore so i started mm -hmm. i think it's a normal thing that happens it's a survival mechanism but it just created a lot of further pain <laughs> and i started making bad decisions and like it, it got really bad at some point. So about one and a half years ago, I got to a point in my business where I had created quite a bit of success again as a coach and, and all that. And I was like, okay, now it's not about the money anymore. It's something's missing. Like, I feel like I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know what my purpose is. And then I really started reconnecting and it was a journey of really learning to feel myself again, really be honest with myself and, and asking many, many times over and over again, what really brings me joy? So that has really guided me back to the truth and to my purpose. And of course, there's always a next level that comes after that, but I think that's about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, that's brilliant because obviously mm -hmm. it it shows you know how you've sort of like gone through your journey with with your with your own in, in intuition and that. So, so to talk a bit about um, you know how um, women can get back their intuition or get in touch with their intuition to try and find out more about their purpose. So. 
I get this question a lot from people ever since I got started on my journey as a spiritual guide. That's definitely one of the questions I've received over and over again. Um, people wanting or feeling that there is something new waiting for them or something else beyond what they've created in their career so far. And often there's a lot of confusion about you know, what, what is my purpose? Or we have this idea that our purpose is something that we're supposed to be doing, or that's somehow guided from an outside source. Sometimes I think it happens quite a lot in the spiritual community that we tend to see God as a, an outside authority and, or our, even our higher self or our soul. And I mean, that has a lot to do with all the conditioning we've received over many generations and um so i think we tend to overcomplicate it but in the end i think the the best way to really get in touch with your purpose with yourself about what you're passionate about what what really brings you joy um where's your curiosity leading you to like what do you feel inspired to explore what really excites you? Um, what do you want to learn to? And there was one more thing. <laughs> but basically it's it's nothing that somebody else can tell you. It's it's really your choice ultimately. And we don't always know how the journey is gonna unfold, but if you really connect with what you're feeling inspired to explore in the moment, you will get the next step and the next step and the next step. And it can be a very magical journey. So the answers are already within you. And if you connect with what really brings you joy, I think that's the best way to, to find your purpose. Also what comes naturally to you, what's just easy and fun for you to do ultimately yeah so so how um so so how you know so you should find your joy and, and and your passion does that automatically mean your intuition will kick in or is it something that's already there that you've worked on or is it something that just happens well i'd say intuition is something that we all have very naturally but a lot of us have also learned from a very young age to distrust our own intuition, our own inner knowing. When we're children, we get to hear things like, you know, we can't have this right now. Or maybe you want to, you, you tell your parents, I want to be this amazing singer <laughs> when I grow up, or I want to be an astronaut or something really wild and crazy. And maybe some people will tell you, you know, that's really hard or that's, you can't do that right now and things like that so or we also get punished sometimes for feeling what we're feeling even if it's things like getting angry about something and and or being sad about something and then somebody tells you don't cry don't be sad and and we learn to invalidate our own inner guidance system and it happens to various degrees so it it's not as traumatic for some people as it is for other people. But um, I mean, that's all the, the conditioning that we get from society as well. What's seen as desirable by society. And, and so that's why we go and choose careers that don't fill us with joy. Um, but I think if we're really honest with ourselves, the inner guidance is always there. It's the question is more about, are you acting on your truth? Are you acting on what your intuition is showing you? Um, and a lot of the times I think it's just fear that's holding us back from really living our truth and following our joy and intuition. Yeah. Yeah. But there is sort of like a, a lot of a fear stuff, um, going in you know sort of like outside influences all the time you know with the news and media uh friends you know people talking etc all that stuff kind of like get you know kind of gets you and, then, and i think especially um 
I mean, it affects every, everybody, every, every living person, whether they're spiritual. I mean, everybody's spiritual, but whether they know they're spiritual or they're, they're, they ignore that they're, that, that they're spiritual. But obviously those that know they're spiritual and kind of like on that path, that stuff can be quite hard, quite hard for them. They get really sensitive to it and, um, you know, and, and it can sort of like cause them personal issues um, with, with, with things that are going on, do you think? Yeah, so you're talking specifically about sensitivity. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think what I have experienced on my own journey, I've definitely always been a very sensitive person. And I consider myself a light worker, although it's sometimes also a label I don't really like because, I mean, we all get to choose ultimately who we want to be and, and what we want to do in this world. But I do believe that there are souls incarnated here on this planet that came here with a very specific mission or intention to help bring healing to humanity and the planet and just raise consciousness and um, all the things that we most of us have heard about many times. And I think there are souls that choose bodies that are a good match because um, ultimately everything's connected. So we tend to choose bodies that can hold that amount of energy or that that vibration that we need to embody in order to do the work that we're here to do and typically once we start to awaken especially on this journey and as children as well because we're already awake actually as children yeah we are a lot more sensitive than let's say the the average person so when we go through a lot of change or when we when we're on this journey of stepping into our purpose as well, um, especially for let's say spiritual guides and healers, and because there's a lot of trauma that can come up just from past lifetimes and um, our ancestral lineage as well, and it can be really really tough to work through because if we are this sensitive and there's all this, this stuff and this pain that comes up, I feel that what's really important for, for people who consider themselves highly sensitive is to just be really gentle with ourselves and to give ourselves the space that we need to stay connected to ourselves and often that also means just doing things differently um mm -hmm. a lot of the rules that i've seen this so many times in the business world there you know there's especially in the coaching world too it can be very competitive and there is that that energy that like <laughs> when i spend too much time around that energy it just gets really um it makes me anxious and it, it, it gets draining too. And I need to consciously disconnect from social media to find my own space and, and then reconnect with myself. So I think we just need to give ourselves permission to make our own rules and, and do things differently and, and also take care of things that may be happening in our environment as well. Just make sure that we have a safe space in our relationships as well and supportive people in our lives. I think that's really, really important. Yeah, 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 supportive people. And it, and it's trying to um, sort of like be with, with people that inspire you. Um, you know, they're, 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 they've got a nice energy that you feel you can bounce off them. They don't judge you and they accept you mm -hmm. of what you are. I mean, I mean, going back to something you said, which I thought was, which was really interesting and could possibly, you know, if, if it was, was the fact that you, you said, um, uh, you know, that your, your spirit or your soul chooses the body 
to actually come come into which you know is is you could you could turn it around so that if you have issues with your body it can kind of be okay well there's a my body's this way because of the stuff I can do and I should be doing mm -hmm. so I shouldn't be worrying about it too much because that that's 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 what I, that's what I've chosen absolutely I think this is a really important point and definitely looking back when I kind of remember my own childhood you know I was often told you're so sensitive and you're crying all the time and you know I was kind of being punished for being so sensitive but now I really see it as a gift I know it's part of my purpose and, and I need to have this degree of sensitivity to be able to do my work yeah and on the other hand I also believe that the physical body is actually a really important part of our intuition because our body will communicate when things are out of balance in our lives so we actually really need to pay attention to that and uh, there's this really amazing book by Louise Hay which I'm sure some of you will know I think it's called you you can heal your body, body. And she, she um, explains all the the meanings of the symptoms which I always find really accurate so really pay attention to what your your body is communicating and and I, and I think I think we do ignore that sometimes sometimes don't we you know mm -hmm. we ignore oh I've, I've got I've, you know I've got this irritation or you know saying just doesn't feel right but I'm just going to continue with what I'm going to do mm -hmm. without actually stopping and going actually what is my body trying to tell trying to tell me mm -hmm. is it something physical or is it something that I should be doing that I'm not doing or I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. And I think that our bodies actually start creating symptoms long after we've started ignoring our own inner wisdom. Because initially it's just energy, it's emotion, it's what we're feeling. It can be very subtle, but if we keep ignoring what our, yeah, our, ourselves and, and what we're feeling, our, our own truth, then those issues will eventually manifest physically as illness or physical symptoms so if if you're having illness or some issues in the body like allergies for example then there's probably already something that you've been ignoring for for a pretty long time yeah so so you're yeah and so did you always have you always trusted your intuition or was it that aha moment when you when you said you were sitting on the balcony in Switzerland that you really kind of like, oh, I, this is my intuition? I didn't name it intuition back then, I think. It was very, very natural for me. I think I was actually really connected to my intuition for yeah, for the most part in, in my life. And I was always really, I'd say naturally following my, my joy and my passion. Sometimes I might, you know, get scared or like just hold back out of fear, yeah. maybe not take the next step right away, but I'm still like, I'm feeling, I want to do this. Like, I want to do this. I really want to do this. And I know I'm going to do it, you know, someday. And then it's more about taking action. And I think what I already shared earlier in our conversation, mm -hmm. like the the time when I was starting to disconnect from my intuition more, that came later. Although I do have to say, maybe in my relationships, I was really good at ignoring my my intuition actually for most of my life. And that's what led to everything else ultimately. So I think that's where it really started. Um, later on and those yeah. were things that were not new that had definitely already been there that i just needed to become aware of in that time in my life to to go through a massive amount of healing and and ultimately 
uh, release a lot of old karma and baggage and then step into something new. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause I, cause I think that that's, that's the thing that most people do, especially, especially women do is we, when it comes to relationships, it's kind of like we do ignore those signals, those feelings, those ill, um, you know, things be, because we want to try and make relationships, whether it's with partners or friends or family. And we always mm. want to try and make it work, don't we? When, when we're not ready to go, actually, that's not working. And it should be. We're always like, mm. no, no, let, let's see if I can make it work. So I don't want this to happen. I don't want that to happen. Mm, absolutely. I think for me, looking back at my previous relationships, I always had this inner knowing when I started a relationship with somebody that it wasn't going to last. But I think at the same time, I kind of needed to go through this journey with those people at the same time. Like I, I had certain lessons to learn and everything prepared me for maybe my next relationship or for, for the next level. So I think it's also sometimes it just is part of the human journey that we may know on a certain level that, okay, this may not be the ideal situation or the ideal relationship in the long run, but there's still something to be learned from it. Um, but then again, it's we do have the choice because ultimately I think the lesson is to learn to trust what, what we know and what we feel deep mm. inside and to trust our own truth. And when we start acting on that, then everything changes and and we we still attract relationships that we can learn from but it will be a different way of learning it's more of a sense of growing together and it can be challenging sometimes too but there's more joy and more harmony like i definitely see that in my current relationship like there's no drama there's there's just nothing that feels impure or off or i just you know maybe know that somebody's lying to me that happened in the past that i, I was with somebody who was constantly lying to me and i kind of felt it but i was ignoring it and now i'm like like i, I can feel it right away when when yeah. something's off and then i just address it right away and, and then it's yeah it's it's done <laughs> yeah and then that's the thing that you still like when you recognize it addressing it and and mm -hmm. just seeing and just uh, just seeing where where it goes um mm. and kind of like you'll have to or in case anyone noticed my cat gypsy has decided to sit on my lap hence so why he keeps seeing a towel every now and again <laughs> go across and now she's gone that i've mentioned her although today luckily she didn't start chewing the uh, headphones because she doesn't do that sometimes it's like stop to stop doing that uh, but the best cats for you mm. um yeah. so if anyone's so anyone watching if you have got any questions then you know, you know, please, please feel free to, to, to write them up. So how, so, so why do people tend to contact you and how do you help people when they do contact you? All right. So I've actually done many different things over the years and I initially started as a an angel reader as well and a spiritual healer and guide. What I do nowadays is definitely mostly I work with business owners and, and on different levels. I typically work with people who want to like conscious people, spiritual people, light workers who want to start a business and turn their spiritual gifts into a career that can support them fully so they can quit their corporate career and make a bigger impact in the world with their gifts and really grow their online presence and and all that and i help them break through the very specific issues that tend to come up for for these types of people and so it's typically a a combination of spiritual work and and then also the more down to earth pieces. How do I ground my ideas into reality? Um, 
a lot of people have a lot of different ideas and they don't really know how to create that focus that is necessary to you know be consistent in business and really build a solid foundation and so that's one part then i also work with entrepreneurs on a bit of a higher level who have already um, started like who already have an established business and who are more let's say in a who are still stuck in the corporate mindset. So they've basically recreated their corporate prisons in their own business, whether it is that they're feeling burnt out from, you know, hustling and, and just not honoring their sensitivity and trying to implement things in a way that is more aligned with the old paradigm than what they're actually here to help create. And often, I have women who are feeling really disconnected from their own intuition or they just feel something is off in their business and and they're they're just tired of let's say um like implementing maybe they've already worked with different coaches more in the traditional coaching world and they've learned certain strategies and strategy is great because we we need that and we need a certain amount of masculine energy and structure in business too but um what i see a lot what happens is that um conscious entrepreneurs especially women tend to then just disconnect from themselves and and then their businesses i've, I've heard things like you know working with this strategy or this person has totally destroyed my business. I don't know who I am anymore. I, I know um, I'm meant to be doing this work, but I feel so disconnected from my purpose and I'm not clear about what I want and, and what I really want to do next. So I really help them get back into alignment and reconnect with their soul and, and this deepest spiritual truth that just can't come from the outside, that needs to come from the inside. And then also... Um, I share more grounded techniques just to help them stay in their in their Zen space <laughs> where they can, <laughs> you know, stay connected to their intuition and just create more time freedom and and simplicity is often for for those of us who are highly sensitive to energies and who um, are creative and have a lot of <laughs> ideas. We need to have a space where we can be really grounded and and where we can keep things simple so we actually have that focus and we can put our energy into the right things rather than just being busy for the sake of being busy, which always disconnects us from from ourselves and and just it's kind of running on autopilot just based on our conditioning, but it it doesn't really create that that amount of growth or it doesn't work for, let's say, people on a certain level of consciousness who are just done with certain lessons in the in the human world who are more here to bring in the new paradigm and, and not uphold the old structures that are based in fear ultimately. So yeah long yeah. answer but. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know but it, you know it, it, it shows uh, um all the you know the, the the different things that you you can help um mm -hmm. you, you know you you can help you can help people with um so now as people that watch this know i do guided meditations and angel card readings so each week i ask my guests so around where they would like a mini guided meditation or an angel card. So Anna, would you like me to pull an angel card for you and those watching, or would you like a guided meditation? I'm really feeling the angel card. That's right. Most people do choose the angel cards. It's amazing how that always comes out. Um, I've got them here too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have said you do a read, you do a card. <laughs> we can both pull one. <laughs> yeah, why don't we? I'll do one, then you can do okay, one. Okay, go ahead. 
<laughs> okay. Um, so all those that know, when when I work, I tend to work um, in the present um, uh, for what we need to have for high school at this moment in time, which seems contradictory to um, uh, the fact that I work with past lives and I go into the future life. But 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 where I work with the past life, it's to heal, to bring to the present, and the future is to bring back to to the present. So so when I do the cards, it is for the present. And Saad has said, yep, she wants an angel card. So you're going to get an angel card from, from both me and Anna, to, Anna today. So what does everyone need to know that's watching this for their whole world? Okay, that one decided it was coming out. Okay, which is quite interesting with what we've been talking about. Impasse, reflect and redirect your energy. So, look. We can see that there. So, we, which is which is quite interesting with with what we with what we've been been talking about, and it, you know, um, and it's kind of I think it connects with you as well because you're kind of like changing your energy and your focus um, slightly slightly at the moment, and it is again going in and reflecting on on where you're meant to be going, what you're what you're meant what you're meant to be doing, and then putting your energy into that rather than putting it into other stuff that, that's taking place, if that makes sense. Mm, absolutely. And uh, and I always find that the the card when the card comes out, most people already know when the card comes out, they're going, actually yeah, I already know that, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to say it or admit it. It's like, well, that's why the cards come out. It's telling you. You already know this. Do it. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, that. So, why don't you do a card now as well? Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say that these themes have definitely been coming up. I think not just for myself, but mm. for a lot of people, just over this uh, full moon mm. period too. It's been a lot of shifting and, and releasing and yes so it's been pretty crazy these past few days okay let, let's see okay can you pick mermaids or angels well we've had angel why don't we go with mermaids okay let's do the mermaids yeah let's do the mermaids okay. we've had an angel now let's do mermaids all right still one of my favorite things to do i actually still work with the angels and in, in my business mentoring and coaching practice too so i find one of the most effective ways to create big big uh, like quick and big breakthroughs yeah i, 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 I think mm -hmm. once you've uh, you you've connected to angels it doesn't matter what you do or where you go you're always going to have angels mm -hmm. coming in giving you little bits of pieces here here mm -hmm. and there you know you never get away from them i mean they're always there anyway from when we're born but when you know and you connect with them you can never not be connected to them they will mm -hmm. always they will always turn up mm -hmm. that's true unless we resist their <laughs> their support <laughs> exactly and then they will they will find ways of getting through eventually oh yeah for sure well they just wait for the right moment where when we're ready and receptive yeah um but yeah I, th I just think they're really great at helping us look past our ego and fear-based mm. illusions so it's just really the quickest way to shift okay let's pull a mermaid card everybody who's watching live or later the later yep and it's a really beautiful one have faith ah your prayers are manifesting remain positive and follow your guidance okay so i'm just gonna tune into the card and I'm gonna mm. see what what wants to come through but yeah one thing that's that's coming through is 
And that might not apply to everybody, but for those of you who are meant to hear this, you will know that it is for you. So I see there's something new coming. There is light. Um, if you look at the clouds here, there is light. And so the message that's that's coming through is trust the process, trust the journey. And if you can see the light and, and you really feel that it is something that resonates with your soul and, and it's really coming th from your inner guidance. Even if you can't see the complete picture, because usually we don't see the complete picture until later on our journeys, but there's something that's calling you and it's constantly, like consistently pulling you forward. Um, you, you know that it is coming from your soul and from your inner wisdom. It is trust trust that and take the next step and trust that you're you're fully supported too as you let go of things that may no longer be in alignment with your truth and that are ultimately holding you back from from stepping forward on your journey of evolution and really stepping into your, your next chapter in your life so trust and remember who you are. You really, you do have the power to create anything that you desire. So yeah. trust yourself too. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that makes absolutely sense. And again, it, it's, it's like with the, the angel card, it all fits mm -hmm. in with, with the Virgo full moon energy that's coming in now as as well mm -hmm. so it all, all ties in into that and with and with and with what you've been talking about and so on said thanks so so that was uh mm -hmm. so that was brilliant so thank you son um so i hope everyone that you've enjoyed um this and found it insightful and that the words of wisdom anna has uh, given you will help you further on your journey so and if people want to connect with you how do they do that I think the two best ways are either go to my website, which is anafrolic.com, um, A-N-N-A-F-R-O-L-I-K. And yeah, okay, perfect. Or you can message me on Facebook, um, ideally through my private profile. That's where I get my messages. I think I, I actually have messages turned off on my business page. I might turn them on. <laughs> I had to I had to do that because I like years ago I was just getting a lot of um, annoying messages <laughs> that were just um, that I then had to reply to because Facebook, you know, if, if you don't reply, yeah. then you just get a bad rating. So and I was kind of being harassed a little bit by oh no someone, so i had to turn that off but i think i could probably turn that back on now so anyway yeah. private profile is best right now or my website so oh uh, excellent and san says thank you both Aaron, for your time very grateful thank you san for for, for watching this live um and thank you uh Riley, for watching this live and for everyone that is going to be watching this uh, on on the replay, um, and I would like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their journey and their destiny, just like you. And if you do need help finding, taking charge of your destiny, and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you reach out and connect with me as I would love to book a free 20 to 30 minute session via Skype or Messenger with you to have a quick chat so we can find out more about each other and how I can help you with your journey. And I look forward to you joining me next Wednesday, the 27th at 8 p.m., where I'll be talking to my guest, Christine Cora, about Angelic Craigie and some revelations of the Archangel Metatron. So quickly before we go, Anna, is there anything, um, any tips or anything you want to say to anyone that was watching this live or at a later date? All right. What's spontaneously coming through is don't wait. <laughs>
if you know that there is something new waiting for you, something better, something that is really calling you, whether it's a new career or a new direction in your love life, perhaps something that your heart really desires and you've been putting it off, you've been putting off your decisions, you've been waiting for better circumstances, stop the waiting game <laughs> and know that everything is, you're free, you're free to create your destiny the way it is true for you now. Everything always happens in the present moment. So the, your, your creative power really is in the present moment. And so allow yourself to break free from that mindset that you need to wait for something outside of you to give you permission because that will not happen. You have to make the decision and start taking action even if it's just one baby step today often that's how intuition works and you're fully supported trust that brilliant thank thank you very much much for those uh for that wisdom that that's come through mm -hmm. so again everyone thank you for watching um and liking this uh, whether you're watching live or the replay and i will see you next week so see you all next week bye Thanks, everyone, and bye for now. <laughs>